You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. Dear Homeland Security friend, guy, yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, um, I've only put one light on because it's nice and it's snowing. It's winter again, thank goodness. So if you pray, hey, we prayed for our snow and I actually put it up there for you to pray for us. Well, we got snow the last couple days. We need a lot more of it. So I thought, well, let's see if we can let the light from outside, the natural light from outside. Illuminate. So uh, I'm not liking this camera. It's too wide right now. It's like we should be bordered with that right there. Uh, Alan Aguirre, Chameleon Church, coming at you live and direct from the Wasatch back in northern Utah where you can't find a proper Christian church no matter how far you drive. I'm telling you, man, it is absolutely astounding. Have I always known this? Yes, but I didn't really have to worry about it. Well, I didn't really... Uh, Well, we, and I've mentioned this before, we have visited probably 99.9% of the evangelical Protestant churches in northern Utah. Yes. I mean, I know that might sound, oh, you're exaggerating. No, I'm not. One, there's not that many of them. Uh, And two, it's not that big of an area. So we have, uh, between myself and my daughter, uh, we have literally visited all the Christian churches in northern Utah. And we're presently visiting one that is the only one that claims to be uh, spirit filled, and I I know I, I don't know. It's like it's nineteen eighty something, like early eighties, and and not only does it feel like it's nineteen eighty something, it feels like the people that are running this church are um, they're so wet behind the ears. It, it, it's startling. It's absolutely startling. Um. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not sure how it's even possible. How is it possible for an entire state not to have at least one, you know, legitimate church where, where, well, you know, it shouldn't surprise me. It took me 20 years in tra- and, and traveling all over the country and working with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of churches to find one that was legit. I know, I know you guys are all freaking out about that. I've had, uh, I've had this conversation with Christians for a long time. What do you mean, Alan? How come you don't think any of these churches are legit? Well, I don't know how much time do you have. We only have a little over an hour here. Um, because they're not. They don't preach the gospel correctly. They don't preach the Bible correctly. They don't preach the balance of Old and New Testament. They, you know, they just don't. They, they don't believe 75% of what is taught in the scripture, in the Bible, uh, they just don't. Because based on your slant, you know, your evangelical slant and your charismatic slant will depend what it is you don't or do do or do not believe. Uh, I'm not even talking Torah. Man, I'm not even, I haven't, I'm not, I'm not even putting Torah on this table, you know. Uh, and, you know, what else? Uh, and they don't, you know, they don't have any demonstrative example that they're functioning in any sort of power in the Holy Spirit um, regarding anything, you know, whether it's, you know, the basics, you know, speaking in tongues and prophecy. That's those I call those the basics because Paul used those as, as the basics. I want all of you to prophesy and I want all of you to speak in tongues. And if you don't, and see, and if you don't believe that, that that's in there, then you're you probably go to a church like this <laughs> and think you're woohoo, you know, storming the throne room. Oh my gosh, it is absolutely terrifying. 
absolutely terrifying. And uh, so, so there's only one self-proclaimed spirit-filled church around here. It's an hour away and, uh, bless their hearts. <laughs> the closest messianic church to the South of us is in St. George. That's six hours away, well, five hours away. And the closest uh, messianic church to the north of us is somewhere in Idaho, 500 plus miles away. Man, I came here to be edified, encouraged, encouraged, and I'm just not feeling it. I'm going to have to find another 6.45 a.m., live oh, yeah. youtube channel to get my edification because i'm not feeling any fruits of the spirit i'm here to impart joy oh, peace gentleness oh. of the holy spirit to you i'm here to make you feel good about Come yourself on, man oh man hey alan always be a reason to get what's it always be ready to give a reason for the hope that you have where's your hope man <laughs> come on you're putting in man you're putting in goateed youth pastors. It's not going to happen. Oh, man. You, but I love you, dude. Don't, I love you, too. Don't get bummed out, man. Isn't that when, astounding, when you, when you gonna chart? When are you going to start a church with 100% perfect, man? I'm ready. You well, start that not, church, I'm going to... See, but it's not about 100% perfect, man. Mm. It's about... I know. Uh, it's about 100% doing this right. Because we can do it right. We can teach the gospel properly. We can we can do all that. I mean, it's not like that's if if that's not obtainable, then we're all in trouble. But it is. We know that it is. It's it's, it's you know what I'm saying? Um see that's what I'm not even talking about the man. I'm talking about theology, doctrine, teaching. I mean, do you know how cringe worthy it is to sit and at, at, at a church on Sunday morning and hear the guy teach one verse? theology one verse it's like i'm sitting there going oh my gosh because that's what they taught him how to do in seminary what do, i don't know it's terrifying they taught him how to do that in seminary you teach one verse theology damn the torpedoes if you're if there's context and it's like i'm sitting there going oh my god oh my god it's like and so they don't know the word. They don't know the, 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 rich, the richness of the word, how the word Genesis to Revelation is literally one narrative, and it's all connected, and it interprets itself, and here it is, and here's the richness of it. You know, I mean, that's why we do what we do here. But, I mean, uh, how is it possible? I mean, how is it possible... Did, so did you visit another? Church? No, I've been going yes. to this one for four weeks in a row, and I'm and I already have a better freaking attendance record than their new worship leader. He's been he's only shown up twice in four, and you know he's only been there fifty percent of the time. And it's just, and you know, okay, so I I I was a missionary. I know how to do this stuff. I know how to plan a church and set it up, and you know, and I know how to do this. I've done it. These I have given these guys every opportunity to give me my to give me their number for to to for me to give them my number so they can connect with me and call me outside of the Sunday morning construct and and right and build relationship get to know me whatever I and they and they've not, they haven't done it I mean I've literally have can I give you my card can I give you my card my card's in the car Will you come 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 and they're like oh no don't worry about it I mean they literally don't want my number. And it's like, when you're starting a church, you're supposed to be doing everything you can to reach out and touch somebody and make that connection and make that relationship. They're not even, they don't even know how to do that. They're not I even was, doing that. <clears throat> oh, it's so. I was thinking of you this weekend. So scary. Obviously on our text threads, but I was in, I was out of town. My daughter was in a volleyball tournament over the weekend because of the holiday weekend. So she had a thing in the morning that it wasn't games. So she's hanging out. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go. I had a list of churches to go visit, go check out. And uh, I was there and I was thinking, man, I wish I, I wish Alan was here. <laughs> like, I was like, how could we make this a reality TV show? 
No. It's like we blindfold you. It's like we you come in in some screen and we just put you into any church in anywhere in America, but you don't know where you're going and you don't know what you're walking into. Oh man. And they they reveal the screen. Uh, you know, they you, they take the blindfold off your eyes and you're like you, you have to you have to say where you're at, what kind of denominator like, you know. I mean, I think that would be just so fun. Oh my gosh. It would be. So it's much watch TV. They've already made a reality show. It's called Kitchen Nightmares. It's exactly what it is, right? <laughs> this 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 restaurant is on the edge of destruction. It's about to, you know, they're 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 hemorrhaging tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, they don't understand why there's nobody there, so they get Chef Ramsay. I don't know. I don't care if you like him or not. He's amazing. He's just amazing. Look at his new show. He just he's I, we've been watching his new show. So during during the pandemic, he actually developed. And produce, you know, and created this new show. It's called Next Level. Phenomenal, phenomenal, just absolutely phenomenal. Anyway, he shows up to the restaurant. He assesses the situation. Checks out. Checks out the food. It's over. There's always like something grotesquely wrong with the food, obviously. And then uh, he gives. He basically does three to four, five things. It's like why you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel there's three to five things you should be doing and you're not doing any of them and that's why your your restaurant is failing you and then the idea is to try and get these people to to do these three to five things and they they push back there's blowback they don't want it they're not going to do it who are you what do, why do you think you know what's right and what's wrong it's like and he's like looking at him like you called me dumbass did you, or did you forget that's where muppet comes in i love it when he calls him he calls him a donut you donut. Anyway, it's just like, and it's it's exactly exactly the same thing. Wisdom is learning from somebody else's mistakes. There's a reason why he's made some apostles and prophets, why he made some to actually lead the charge and to teach you and to equip you, right, for the for the for, for ministry, to equip you to know how to talk to the person that's checking you out at the supermarket, so you can stir yourself up and give them a prophetic word. There's 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 a there's a there's an actual methodology. There's rules of engagements, and the vast major over eighty percent of them have no idea what those are, and so they don't do them. They weren't taught, and it's not like they're going to go and figure it out on their own because you have to really be pressing into the Holy Spirit for Him to talk to you, for Him to go, "Hey, you're doing this all wrong. Let me show you how to do this." I mean, right? I mean, that's that's how. Anyway, so. It, there, that show already exists. Do you think you're eventually going to find the place to be? No, not here. Not in Utah. Well, like I said, we found it in Texas, and it took 20 years to find it. I mean, it's interesting scripture when you think, uh, you know, don't give the ha- go, don't give up the habit of meeting together. I mean, there's something certainly oh, God certainly God knew why th- that we is- wouldn't that we wouldn't have it all figured out, and there's something in the struggle of yes, at least walking in you might be like off by 10 degrees but you're still walking in a general direction of the light and so he's encouraging not to give that up and right yeah we're and we're not i mean which is why we've we've been to every possible church more than one the majority of them we've been to more than once to suss them out the only one the only time we've only been there once or just twice is because they've asked us not to come back or it's so bad you would be derelict negligent to go back does that make sense but here's the thing i can't sit here and tell you because you asked the question well god knew well, it wasn't really a question but you made it you made a statement well god knew he knows why you're there and blah 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 yeah and i can't answer that question because it makes me sound like i have a messianic complex so i can't even publicly i can't even answer that question because it makes me look weird privately i can i could but it's like well we know why we're here and we would you know, if we could, if we had a facility that would accommodate something like that and feasts, so all of these pe- wonderful people could come here on a year, you know, for the feast, so that we could minister to them, and that would be awesome. And we found a place, but it's going to cost, you know, nine hundred thousand dollars. Okay, I've been really excited. I sent you week. the link. <laughs> it's uh, it's Testimony Tuesday. Yes, Where's it Lenny? is. Where's Lenny, by the way? Uh, Lenny's not feeling good on Testimony Tuesday. It was his idea, and he's like, you know what? No, he's uh, apparently he's not feeling good. So be sure to pray for him. But yes, it's Testimony Tuesday. Look re- at how re- recap for our viewers. 
Did you see how uh, uh, Chris just manipulated me in the conversation and went like this? These are not the droids you aren't looking for. Yes, it's Testimony Tuesday because so you want give you give them a recap uh, since last, you're taking over. Yeah, they well, come for me, but they stay for you. Yeah, that's right. Um, did Pfizer come in with that advert? The did they <laughs> sign that yet? Oh they, my gosh! I saw the logo. I saw. You just the, need nine hundred thousand dollars, Pfizer. <clears throat> okay. Are you, I can reach out to them again if you want me to. Oh my gosh. Um. Okay, so last week, towards the ends of the it, towards the ends of the session, you felt like we weren't done. We were waiting on the Lord, and so we just prayed and waiting on the Lord. And you, I mean, Bill, you got a word of knowledge. You were wondering if we should pray for people with chest pains. What was it? Lungs, lungs, chest pains, and we yeah. we don't really. So it started off with lung, chest, and then eventually went, oh, okay, respiratory area. Respiratory, basically. and we just asked who wanted to be prayed for, which isn't it. I mean, we do we do pray sometimes, but <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a normal thing. Um, but we opened that up, and, I mean, there were six to seven to eight people in the chat that were That, saying, that we know of. Yeah, that we know of that were saying they wanted prayer, or, and then some people were saying they got healed or they're Lungs yeah. got clear. And so we said this week, if there was anyone that wanted to share that something happened or got healed, then right. we wanted to hear about it. So, so there's, um, we, you know, we know that at least and you six, got an email this week, right? So at least six to eight of you, um, got healed on the spot. I'm wondering how many got healed watching the recap afterward, you know, the, 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 the archived that, that'd be very interesting. Um, And then, so some leaders of a house of prayer movement up in Northern California, um, a group of leaders up there, one of the wives reached out to Lenny um, the next day and said, hey, I watched the show yesterday morning live. (laughs) And so those of us that remember, we we maybe thought, oh, they're going to get upset because I made some comments i shouldn't have made well apparently so anyway she's like hey i watched the show and and she this is what she told lenny there's not a religious bone in that guy's body is there she goes he had me cracking up so what's what you know i'm i'm just like a, i'm just i'm just this normal you're, you're like a charismatic bobblehead there you go Charismatic bobblehead. Torah, Torah. What do, what do we say? Torah. I don't know. Torah don't believing, know. charismatic. What's the third one? Believer of the way. Yeah. I don't know. All, all I'm saying is, sometimes I say things that I shouldn't say, but it's just me being. You know, I don't mean anything by it. I'm just, I'm just that guy. Anyway, <clears throat> she said this guy doesn't have a religious bone in his body, does he? He was cracking me up. So the lady's like, oh, because, you know, she's, we, he thought, like I did when he was telling me this story, this testimony, that she was going to complain. She's like, oh, man, this guy's hilarious. It was a f- breath of fresh air because I'm just like a normal guy, you know? I mean, that's, you know, that's why they brought me into Rude Awakening, right? They brought me into Rude Awakening to uh, – are we frozen everywhere? Uh not Looks like YouTube's moment. frozen. They brought me into Root Awakening to reach out to a younger demographic. And uh, even though I'm like the same age as these other guys. But anyway, um, she said it was a breath of fresh air. So I'm like totally frozen on YouTube. I'm watching up on YouTube. Uh, I was a breath of fresh air and it was cracking her up. And then at the end, when she responded to the, the word of knowledge, her lungs got healed. So I know, so more people than we know are saying that they were here. So we're having testimony Tuesday. So if you have a testimony, please leave a comment since we're not on on zoom or something, leave a comment uh, with a capital T so that we know it's testimony with a capital T and then your testimony. And then we'll say your name and we'll read it. And we'll, we'll, I guess what, talk about it or, or, or give you a high five. I don't know. Yeah. We've never done this. Well, Brian in the comments, well, let's just start here. He, he posted already. That's great, Brian. Okay, so Brian says, no, I'm sorry, did you already put that? I haven't had issues with my blood pressure since last week. Wow. See, 
That's amazing. You can't see, so you can't fake this stuff unless Brian's lying and we're paying him. Like, are you paying him like, like a $5 I bill? Think he's or something endorsed by Pfizer. Or just kidding. So see, see, that's amazing. I'm having to move over here because so I can read my tiny little screen over here. So that's what Brian says. Brian says he hasn't had any blood pressure issues. So what does that say? That, that means our prayer or our word of knowledge was centered on this, but our prayer and the faith of others has expanded it. We've expanded our reach. Let's say, you know, right? Blood pressure. That's awesome, man. I mean, who wants to have issues with their blood and pressure? Nobody. No. So he's so so I guess he's no longer under pressure. Ba-dum-tsh. Under pressure. Ba-dum-tsh. Boom, 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 boom. Pressure. Something I was thinking about, and we had we had talked offline about it. Um I, I, I was telling Alan I was really encouraged about um last week. But that should be a normal thing. Right. In in your local, you know, I was gonna say your local church, but who you're hanging out with in a small group, like we and I know this is Alan's heart. He wants us to engage the gifts, engage yeah. the Holy Spirit as a lifestyle. And this I mean, we should be praying for each other at the dinner table. Yeah. Like he's he mentioned the grocery store. We should be carrying that light and the spirit. We're warriors of light. We're carrying his presence with us everywhere, and that should be the normal expression of our of our christianity and our walk and that's the point of my rant this morning about not finding a church i have experienced christianity at a level the majority of you haven't ever experienced and i'm and that's not and i'm not doing this because that had nothing has nothing to do with me i'm not saying oh look at how cool i am no i'm saying hey look at how cool god is and look at how cool it is to walk in the power and the anointing of the holy spirit and to be in that level it's like if you're a garage man and you've never played outside of your garage i could sit here and go dude it is so rad to headline the roxy and be in all the radio and all the magazines that's all i'm saying See, that's what I'm saying. I've experienced Christianity at a certain level. The majority of people I interact with in the last, since I've been, you know, since I've been saved, don't have that experience. They don't have that reference. They've never experienced Christianity at that level. They've never seen the Holy Spirit move like that or function like that or whatever. And that's all I'm saying. I want you to want me. No, sorry. That's what Ben was at. Cheap trick. Sorry. I want you guys to have that same reference experience. I want you guys to have that same experience. What's I want you to have what what's been my normal for so long. I want it to be your normal. And because I've, I've we've done this for so long, we know how we know how the mechanics are. We know the mechanics of this lifestyle of walking at this level which is why we're able to disseminate it and teach it to you, right? I mean, Chris, right? Chris Chris, Chris knows what I'm talking about because we've done it together. We know how to lead people into a deep throne room Holy Spirit experience in worship. See, if, you're, if your church worship service isn't provoking healing and the prophetic and the supernatural, they're not doing it right. And that's, but Alan, that's a blanket statement. Oh yeah, I know, but it's the truth. And I can back it up with the word. I can back it up. Look at what Paul says. When you come together, you should be bringing a song, a spiritual song and all that, right? Boom, there it is. See, but because most of you, the majority of you have never lived that life or been in that time, that's why we do what we do. And that's why, that's where my frustration lies. I want you guys, and that's why we do what we do. So if you have a testimony, like Michael, put a T in front of what you're, saying so that we know so that we can put it up there all right so this guy so michael said i confirm it he's talking about the other guy with the blood pressure i confirm it because i i have been with brian every day and that morning sitting next to him and watched him change rad we've got we've got uh evidence here you can't fake this stuff now i anyway so let's um be sure to put that whole t there so we know what's going on all right, all right. Is there anything else? Did you find anything else, Chris? Uh, here's one from Aspen. Go ahead and read it. 
severe respiratory infection, far better, as I said last week. Healing is not complete, but expect it will be. That's great, Aspen. Awesome. Yeah, she was telling me how um, she couldn't take a deep breath without going into this coughing fit. And uh, and by I think Wednesday or Tuesday went night Wednesday she was able to she was she had been able to without it so that's rad that's so cool who else come on come on don't be shy also if anyone has a tea testimony from did they engage the Holy Spirit on another's behalf did they pray for someone else during the week or mm-hmm. see healing in your own life or God working through you. <laughs> Man, I knew I should have had my. What is? I, I mean, it's on the pass of time. If you know, as yeah. someone, when I when I was at that visiting that church this weekend, um, I was wondering just what you said about the engaging the Holy Spirit, seeing healing should be normative, and and mm-hmm. I was thinking, man, how do we get off my my. Uh, my mentor, my pastor calls it the in and out burger church Mm. where it's like, you know, and this was one of those scenes where there's three services and they're 90 minutes apart. Right. And I was just kind of like, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes I've, I've visited one of those churches and been, Oh, pleasantly surprised. This, this one was not that, but like the service I was service was over in 59 minutes. Wow. And it's not talking, you know, the length of the service doesn't determine the spirit, but it just, it, right. I know what this is. I know what this programmatic, you know, yeah. and you're like, how, and that isn't necessarily bad if it's a certain expression, because I'm not in the community in the week. I don't know what's happening behind the scenes, but how, but I know this is true because I've, it's been my experience elsewhere is like, how does that become the normal expression of right. someone's walk where, where they're probably, you know, there's a there's a there's a percentage of people there that aren't reading their Bible, that are saying they're Christians. There's a percentage there that aren't like this is the only engagement point they're having during the week. And how it's, does how does that survive? How does that come up? And then how does that become the normal? Is is disturbing? It, I mean, it really. I mean, it really is. So because I know what it's supposed to look like. And then what it looks like from for them for for any body to get from here to there, it's probably not going to happen. It's there's less chance of it happening than there. And I know that's not what you want, anyone wants to hear, but it's just the truth, right? Look at what Israel had to go through to get from where they needed to be and where they were at, right? Uh, it re, so it, it one first and foremost, the leadership is going to have to have an absolute, interactive, extreme, remember we talk about those five things, interact, uh, extreme intimacy, extreme obedience, extreme interactive with the Holy Spirit, friend of the bridegroom, you know, extreme stewardship. I've written about it. We've talked about it. So the first thing that has to happen is the leadership of that church, I don't care how big it is, has to have or allow themselves to have an extreme encounter with the with the living God through this the rushing power of the Holy Spirit and 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 to have a revelation of the person of Jesus. But Alan, they all do. They all say they do. I know, but but all it, you can sit here all day long and say, but Alan, they believe that. But Alan, they say that. But Alan, doesn't matter. You can say that all day long. All you have to do is look at the situation. This, it doesn't even really take the sermon. All you have to do is look at the situation. Are they functioning? Because if they're functioning like this, it's obvious. So they have to have the leadership of that church has to have allow has to allow this incredible. You want to want to reset, right? Everyone's talking about a reset. It's a, it's an incredible Holy Spirit reset. Now, here's what that will do. It will purge close to 80% of the people involved. Look at Israel. Again, Israel's over here. They need to get over here. And in order for them to get from here to here, a whole bunch of purging was done. 
A whole bunch of people are going to say, that's not God. I don't believe that way. You know, you're trying to do this. You're trying to manipulate this, right? They're going to, they're going to give you all the reasons why what you're trying to do isn't the Lord. This is what they try to do. This is what, that's what they do. That's, 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 that's all over our Bible, right? And then normally, you, you, should, you know, at that point, somebody that's already doing it, someone that's already versed in that should be able to come in then and help mentor you through the steps of, you know, how do you worship properly in the Spirit? How do you make room for the Holy Spirit in your church? How do you make room for the prophetic, for healing, for the supernatural? How do you make room for the Holy Spirit in your church? And it, and that, and you know what? Let me put, let me put this, let me, let, this is how I put it all. The, I've been putting it like this for decades. If your church looks the same every Sunday morning, the Holy Spirit's not there. You know, and if you're going to, ch- and, and, you know, I know what you're talking about, where we have your 50 minute service, you know, you have your, your 10 minute song, your 20 minute teaching and your five minute song, and then you're out. I mean, right. We know what that, that's, that's the, the, uh, the secret friendly church. I mean, everybody's gone to this model. Well, it's going to be, you're going to be hard pressed for the Holy Spirit to, to, for any of this to happen if that's what your model is. Because if you're not showing up on a Sunday morning, for example, for church, and an anticipant, like what does Paul say? Bring, bring, a, bring, bring something to the table. If you're not, if, if there's no room for that, if you're not set up like that, you know, so people are might be asking, well, what is it supposed to look like, Alan? Well, one, you got to have an incredibly fluid worship team, worship leader that knows how to hear from the Holy Spirit on the spot, right, Chris? <laughs> and then you probably have, oh. and then you probably have two or three people up front that that's able to help, right? The prophets that are able to to drive. Okay, and then, you know, speak the word, call out the word of knowledge, the healing, right, come up, boom. See, it's interactive, and this could take a couple hours. <laughs> and there we go. There we oh go. But uh, Seahawks play at one. Exactly, right? <laughs> All right, so we got another one here. Monica, I drove almost three hours to go to church, straight path church. During worship, a sister came up to me, and I was touched by the Holy Spirit. What I felt was that my Lord is with me and has never left me. Awesome. All right, we've got another one here. Do you want to read this one, Chris? Yep. The Lord has been working through my brother Michael, who is faithfully bearing many burdens with me, praying with me in every morning and evening. So that is right there. That's church. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I with, with them. And discipling me through great struggle of faith by God's grace. Obviously, some confidential stuff there. And the power of the Holy Spirit. I am learning to rely on the Holy Spirit. Can't lose there. Yeah. Walking this out in faith. That's all. That's that's scripture. And I'm being healed. Right? We're being sanctified. We're being we are sanctified. We're being sanctified. We will be sanctified. I'm being healed spiritually. The spirit is moving in Humboldt County, California. Awesome, Brian. Thank you. It's sweet. I mean, you, when you have, I mean, two brothers walking together, right? Yeah. If one falls, they can lift them up. You don't have to be doctorate in philo- in <laughs> divinity studies. In fact, that could be a harm. I mean, that was the Pharisees. Yeah. It is pick up the word, read it, do what it says, find a friend, pursue the Lord together, and and God will be merciful. Yeah. You draw near to God, whatever if you're three years old, I saw it in my kids and they were little. Yep. Yep. You don't have to be a professional Christian and have even read the Bible through completely, although I would recommend it and do it often. But draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to, can you grab this next one? I should have gone while you were talking. I'm going to grab another cup of coffee real quick. What's the next one? Um, okay. I don't know what he's. I don't know what he's saying. I don't see one. But um, I I meet with a lot of people. I run a couple small groups on Monday, and I meet with with people during the week. Most of them are are musicians or people, leaders, senior leaders that have been in churches or going through some times. And there's a there's a frequent thing I have. Um, and I would say this is the demographic, say a musician under age 26 who's finding their faith. 
and there is there is a mentality that we can easily fall into that we have to be perfect and we have to have it figured out before we can approach God, which is exactly the opposite of what scripture teaches us. Luke 11, I'm, I've been loving this passage in Luke 11. It's like 38 to verses 40. And it's the passage where, where, where Jesus is calling out the Pharisees and he says, you clean the outsides of your cup. You make them white and, and shiny. And he's offending them because the Pharisees say, what you're calling us, you know, whatever you, we are not, you know, we are not illegitimate children. I might be putting another gospel story anyway in with Luke 11, but he's offending them and their, their bristles are up because they want to have the appearance. We've got our nice robes. We've got our tassels. We tithe every deal. We tithe every herb and you're calling us. He says, you are full of wheat, greed and wickedness. And they're just ticked off. Then you keep reading. He says, bring me your alms. And what's alms? Alms are gifts, a gift. Bring me your alms. Bring me your worship. Bring me your thing you want to give to the Lord. And he says, what is on the inside? Give me your gift of what is on the inside of you, which he has just told him is greed and wickedness. Bring me your gifts of brokenness. Give me your gifts of I don't have it figured out at all because that's exactly what he sees. He already sees what's on the inside. We are he wants us to bring him his brokenness, our brokenness, and that's where we engage his power and that's where he changes us and heals us. When we give up, when we give up playing the game of being perfect on the outside and we come before him with exactly who we are without him, broken and that's where he heals us. So my encouragement is, no matter where you think you're in your journey, don't compare yourself to others. Look to mentors, yes, but don't let that fear of being educated or well-read or up on everything keep you from coming to the Lord directly, humbly, and just saying, Lord, <laughs> this is all This is all I am. <laughs> help me. Help me. He doesn't want you to have to figure it out without him. You do not live, you do will not find success in living the independent life. You cannot succeed at this without him. And it's a daily reliance on the spirit. I popped my head in while I was making my coffee and I heard you talking about the Pharisees and their tassels and their, their tithing and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that's been what I've been taught. I've been doing that on a two minute warning last week and this week, uh, the woe to you scribes and Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm actually teaching on that about how to go. I, I hear a yes, Chris. So that means that you're all right. It's, it's hard to do all alone, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> so, Alan, where are you going? I know. I, I, I did this by myself for a while when I was between hosts, when, after we fired everybody. That's right. We fire rabbis and everything around here. <laughs> oh, man. Any more testimonies? Surely there's more testimonies. Come on. Hey, so we were, we were while we're waiting for someone to give us a testimony, uh, we were talking about, well, what does it look like? What is it supposed to look like? We were talking about worship and then, you know, the prophetic, you know, people there to, to manage the prophetic or, you know, because that's just the way it's done. We, we see, what do you mean manage the prophetic? That doesn't sound very Christian. Well, you know, look at, once again, look at what Paul says in Corinthians. He says, you know, and, and the prophets, you do it in order and only prophets are subject to prophets, right? So, yeah. Anyway, um, that's why you should come to our Holy Spirit Pentecost Shavuot conference coming up June 9th through 12th. But Alan, we have no information. All the information you need is to fly, you fly into Salt Lake City or drive to Salt Lake City. We'll tell you where to, when you need to be there and where you need to be by before then. Okay. <laughs> Just make your plans. I know somebody's already, I got a text the other day, um, flight booked, car rented. They're ready to go. Do we have any idea where we're going? Not yet. That's, but when we do all gather, even if it's who knows where, when we do get together, this is the, if you've never experienced the model we're talking about, you will experience it there. Because uh, with Ryan, I don't know if Ryan's here today. Ryan's our worship leader with him and, and me and, and, and Chris 
and um, ministries walking, you know, my daughter, my son, the Hellermans, we will, that worship experience, it's all, that's going to be, that's just natural, you know, for us. I mean, not to sound weird, but it is. I mean, Chris and I were doing this in the 90s together. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of, there's a good, good amount of experience. And, and we, you know, we had a prophetic worship band. Anyway, you'll experience that in the worship. And then the teaching, come on, we got, we got, uh, Bill, Pastor Bill, not Mr. Bill, but Pastor Bill. What's his last name? I can't remember. Local guy here I had coffee with yesterday. We were, I, I mentioned last night. Um, he's going to be teaching. Lenny's, Lenny's scheduled to be there to teach. Chris, you coming? That's the plan. That's the plan. Lord willing. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And, and, uh, to and go I'll, this or, to this or that city. <laughs> that's right. To make money. You think you're coming here to make money? <laughs> uh, yeah. And, um, and I'm, I'll be here. Yeah, and we want to impart the power of the Holy Spirit that you're going to need to, to, to continue to assist you to help navigate what's coming tomorrow. So, and it's Pentecost. It's Shavuot, so we will be doing the uh, the two bread offering you might have to buy it unless you're you're in a position to bake it you'll probably have to buy it you'll be you'll be bringing it to me and my wife we will do the wave sheaf offering we will do the 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 pack that's what we'll call it uh between the priest and the person that's you find that in the in the old testament we will do that we will anoint you with oil there's healing and prophecy and all that stuff so it's going to be it's going to be immense. And that's going to take a while because that could take two minutes. That could take 30 minutes, depending on what God does with that individual. So we are going to be having a, yeah, it'll start on a Thursday evening, the 9th, and it'll go through Sunday night. Man, I am so excited about that. But, okay, I saw a T somewhere pop up. Timmer. Paul admonished the Corinthians that if you are hungry, eat before the love feast so you don't pig out. I try to be prepared before gathering so I could be free to be there for others and serve. That's just kind of weird, isn't it, Tim? Are you all right, Tim? Did you fall down and hit your head? And then he says, it made a huge difference, and I grew more than what I was just a consumer. Uh, Okay, I understand what you're saying now. Yeah. So he's you're you're bringing up a physical thing and translating into a spiritual thing. I see what you've done there. Am I right or am I right? What do you think about that there, uh, Chris Croft? That's right. Bill Croft is the pastor. Thank you, Alyssa. See, she's mm-hmm. always saving me. I mean, I think I think the acts acts of service. Whenever we get our, huh, I was going to say it in an inappropriate way. Um, Please don't. We had plenty of that. I'm not editing anything this week. Never. Oh, oh, wait, wait. And someone said camping area somewhere. Lots of camping in Utah. 65% of the state camps. We got that covered. Go ahead. Um, whenever we get things in a bind in our spirit, I mean, upset, a, a, a question, a check is the, the humility check. The humility check of why am I so upset about this? And for me, it's usually a, a thing of control or humility. And Jesus modeled it with his disciples when he washed their feet. Mm-hmm. He disrobes, washes their feet. They're like, what are you doing, man? And he's like, if I don't wash your, if I don't wash, unless I wash you, you have no part of me. And just yeah. such, a, such, you know, the, the corporate way to say it is servant leadership. But referencing Tim's comment of before he goes and pigs out at a love feast, <laughs> He comes, he's prepared himself physically already so he can go with the mindset, I'm not going here to get fed. Yeah. I'm going here to feed others and help. And yeah. a servant mindset is huge. And it, and it does do things in your body and can unlock healing mm-hmm. uh, in your own body. When you, when you make a conscious decision to check off the boxes or do the logistics parts of life, and yeah. manage your own life so that you're free to serve and love others in a, yeah. in a way, in a different way. 
Was it two minute warning where we talked about that? Where hey, you know, the reason why you're probably not being healed or getting healed is because you're not doing this thing right, because you're not following the protocol or the rules of engagement. I'm not sure if that was done on this show or it, on two minute warning. It's a frequent theme. Yeah, but we talked about that and how one you have to be in fellowship. Let's start there. <laughs> and you're, you know, and I understand that there are some of you that can't physically get to a fellowship, which is why we're doing what we're doing. Um, fellowship. Go to the elders, have them lay hands on you and pray for you, and you'll be healed. Uh, forgive your sins one to another, and you'll be healed. Right? I mean, that's what we were ta- dis- discussing. There are rules. There's a way this works. You know, you can't go one, two, five, seven. It's got to be one, two, three, four. Man, I am so excited for you guys. I am so excited for what God is doing and what is and what God is about to do. And I love that we're even involved, that he's even allowing us to be a part of this, what what he's doing. You know, I've always said, you know, the chances of getting saved, just saved. Needle in the haystack. The chance of getting saved in a proper church situation, community, that's just never going to happen. And again, that's based on my years and years and years of being out there and not finding it, you know? So it's exciting that we've, the Lord, see, we, we prayed, Tim, Tim will tell you, and Alyssa, we prayed for you guys. For all, those of you that have only been around maybe the last six months, 10 months, we prayed you guys in. We prayed for cool runnings. We, we prayed to, uh, we cleared your path. We prayed that the enemy wouldn't hinder you from coming, that he wouldn't put obstacles to keep you from coming. We did that. You can ask these people. We did do that. We prayed for you guys, and, and here you are. So we find it a, an, an absolute privilege and an honor to... Uh, to be able to serve you in this way. Oh, okay. Well, um, Nath- Nathalie's husband's lungs did not get healed yet. So we've got to, we got to get that taken care of. Maybe he needs to come up here to the crisp, clean mountain air where it's higher elevation and harder to breathe. <laughs> And we can whoosh, lay hands and heal you. <laughs> There's that laying on the hands again thing, Chris. Yeah. Did your um? So let's ask you, Nathalie. Right. We are not doing all the church things right because you know, that was a looking for a church and eventually give up. Yeah, uh, I, I know all about that. Um, what city do you? What's the nearest major city by you? Nathalie. Oh, look at this. Can you touch on how you deal with messianics that don't won't operate in the move of the spirit, but talks about the rock in their lives? Man, you're talking about all of them. Uh, it's very rare that you can you, that you find messianics that are actually charismatic. Um, we know because we've seen it. Uh, it's very, very rare. For some reason, see, again, it's the enemy. The enemy doesn't want Chris. See, he's not. There's a reason why he ha, why, why Christianity still exists after all these years. He's not even trying to stop it because he doesn't. He knows he doesn't have to stop it. All he has to do is twist it and pervert it, and or or keep certain truths away, and and they're not gonna. They're not. You know, what I'm saying they won't be productive or functioning or. Whatever. San Diego? Oh, come on. There's so many churches out there. <laughs> well, we'll get to that in a second. Um, so it's mind-blowing how these people, you're right. So it's exa- here's exactly how it's like. In the same way, traditional Christianity doesn't, doesn't... So here's how I explain it. Salvation is a spiritual gift. The Holy Spirit, with speaking in tongues and all that demonstrative charismatica, that's a spiritual gift. Understanding your need to walk in Torah, that's a spiritual gift. So I know a lot of Christians that don't have the Holy Spirit part. And I know a lot of Holy Spirit Christians that don't have the Torah part. I know a lot of Torah people that don't have the Holy Spirit part. And that's fine. And the enemy loves that because as long as he does, as long as you're not functioning, the way, what does Revelation say? They have their faith and trust in Jesus and keep the commandments. That's the balance. And faith and trust in Jesus is the full thing. It's not a partial thing, which means 
they're functioning in the spirit. We know that because it talks about the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy in Revelation. Contextually, we know that the church that Jesus built, not a new religion, but the church that Jesus built, based on what we see in the New Testament, was charismatic. They were charismatic, Torah-observant believers of the way. Jesus was the 12 disciples and the writers of the New Testament. Okay? Well, we're, we're barely finding charismatics, that right? Because they're not, so we're missing the pieces. So what's really dangerous is a guy like, is like me. We, when you're a charismatic, Torah observant believer of the way, because we're functioning on all cylinders, right? We've got all the pieces and we're observing them and we're practicing them and we're teaching others how to do it. We're, 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 we're peeling off like the shrink wrap off the New Testament teachings and going, look, this is what it actually says. And, and we're using the Bible itself contextually to, 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 so what, do, how do we deal with it? I remind them, I remind the messianics that everybody in their Bible, in their New Testament, was, was a messianic charismatic. Jesus did all these things and taught his disciples how to do all those things. Jesus said you would do all these things as a sign that you were his disciple, right? And then, and then, then if they start doing stuff like, well, that was, that's not for today. Those gifts are, you know, when they start doing, right, because see, they were not probably nominal Christians to begin with. Now they're nominal Christians with Torah. Same difference. It's the same spirit. So if, if they start using the same lingo they used before they started messing around with Torah, I remind them that their Christian friends are saying the same thing about eating pork and keeping the fees. See? And then I remind them it's the same spirit. It's the same religious spirit that says God has only take, will only take me to a certain point, and then after that, it's no longer God because I'm not comfortable with going past that line. That's a religious spirit. That's why eat my flesh, drink my blood, and they all left them. But the 12 said, where will we go? You have the words of eternal life. And then he said, well, didn't I choose you? Because many are called, few are chosen. The difference between being called, which a lot of us are called, we're all called, the difference between being called and the chosen is the chosen, right? You, whether or not they can wrap their heads around it, what do you mean the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues? I don't get it. It doesn't matter. They, they, they don't tap out. And they trust the Messiah, they trust, right? Because if, if his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not, are not our thoughts, everything about Jesus should uh, freak you out. It should insult you. It should offend you because it's not in your paradigm. We have to transform, renewing of the mind. Holy Spirit, throw your body on the altar. I trust God. God said, speak in tongues, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. How come I'm not doing it? How come my church isn't doing it, Right? We don't even, we don't think, see, we have to think like that, first of all. And that's how I got involved with this Torah stuff. The Bible says I should be, this says I should be keeping the Sabbath, and I'm not even keeping the Sabbath. This says I should be eating clean, and I'm not doing that. And the Holy Spirit said, no, you're not, and you're going to get spanked. Christianity is going to get spanked for not doing that. Well, same, same goes with this. So that's how I deal with the Messianics. I deal, let me tell you, let me tell you, I'll put it this way. Everything I've been telling Christians for the last gazillion years, I'm telling the Torah community the same exact thing because it's the same spirit. The same excuses Christians use for not being in the spirit, charismatics, uh, messianics, and Torah people use the same excuse and vice versa. It's, uh, it's just a mess. And the enemy loves it. I hope, I, that should have answered the question. Um, San Diego. Uh, there's a 119 fellowship finder. Have you, um, surely you've gone through that, right? Um, who else has a fellowship finder? I would say now you see TV, but you should probably stay away from them. Uh, <laughs> 119 has a fellowship finder. Man, there's there's got to be there, I, there's surely there's churches in the San Diego to Oceanside area. There's more people there than there is in the state of Utah. Um. Go ahead and leave us an email, feedback, uh, info at chameleonchurch.com. Let's see what we can do to help you. Alyssa's great at that. She can help. All right, what else? Okay, testimony. Another one. Tim, is it possible for you to have one testimony at one time? Go ahead, Chris. I've been speaking too much. You're funny. 
Last week when we were praying for people, I immediately and spontaneously started praying in tongues. <gasps> What's that? Fervently. Two years ago, I couldn't have done that and would have been terrified to do so. Yeah, I think sometimes uh, it's stepping out in faith, stepping out yeah. of our comfort zone. Uh, I was talking the, in, in our, our drive home yesterday with my daughter. I was t We were talking about, it was in the reference to athletics and team, but of course me, I have to make it Christian, spiritualize it, whatever, spiritual, natural, when we, we can't learn things until we're taken to the edge of our comfort zone. And so a coach, for instance, when they're pushing a uh, individual or their team, they got to get them to their comfort zones into a new next level of technical skill or next, next level of leadership with a team. Same in the spirit, like God got one, when we're, when we go, we're not, we're at the edge of our comfort zone and we say, Oh, Oh, I'm good here. I'm not going beyond this. That's exactly where God pulls us either by faith or, or um, like what Tim is saying, taking a, taking a leap and engaging. Yeah. I've never spoken tongues for, for, well, tell them you want the gift, you know, desire the spiritual gifts. I'm going to believe your word and I'm just going to, like a child, imitate what I think and ask for your blessing and take a God blesses leaps of faith. God blesses courage when we step into new territory. So that's cool, Tim. Yeah. I was, I remember when I, when I was learning, getting, you know, the whole, see, that's the thing. Another, that's another thing Christianity has er erroneously develop this process or this understanding. If you're a prophet, you should just be able to prophesy immediately, correctly. They don't understand that practice. There's practice involved and there's going to be trial and error involved. In well, where's to say that? Well, did you know that Elisha served Elijah and walked with him and now he was his servant? Right? If you look at the new if you look at the Old Testament model, all these prophets had underlings. They all had disciples. And they taught them how to be prophets. There was a school of the prophets. In fact, it's suggested that Shem ran, Noah and Shem ran a discipleship training school in the desert that Abraham went to, or Abram went to, which is how he learned all this, right? You gotta you have to ask yourself, how does this 50, whatever, 60-year-old guy hear the voice of God and know it's him? <laughs> <laughs> out of the blue. Well, he was taught and trained. So either way, we know that all the disciples in the canonized Bible, Old Testament, in the scriptures, in the Tanakh, had followers. They had their own disciples. We see that in, in every, every, you know, over and over and over. And they were being taught, and there's going to be trial and error. There's, right? What is, what is the, we, how, oh, here's the proof text. God th he, um, did something and asked the prophet, what do you see? Because he was testing his ability. Bam, there's your proof text. Okay, so people are taught how to prophesy. People are taught how to speak in tongues. People are taught how to interpret dreams, right? Based on your gift cluster. We can, we'll, we'll, we can dive into this whenever you want. And I think I bring stuff like that up in this book. So anyway, um, when I was in the process of learning how to speak in tongues, I was being told that the reason why I wasn't freely you know, the, it was getting stuck here, is uh, arrogant pride. Because in order to do this, you have to be vulnerable. You have to, like, throw yourself out there. I mean, when you throw yourself on the altar, right? Romans 12, right? Isn't that, Romans 12, 1 and 2, right? Isn't that about throwing yourself on the altar? Mm. Anyway. or is, Yeah, it's, isn't it Romans 12? Anyway. Well, we should probably find it. Chris, how come you're not finding it? You're a little slow, man. You're supposed to be catching up here, bro. Help me I'm, out here. I'm Googling. Tag 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 team me. I just a living sacrifice. That's yep. what you're referring to. Yeah. Therefore, Romans I urge 12. you, brothers and sisters. I you believe there are uh, uh, bodies Off living sacrifice, body. right? Yes. In order for you to throw your body on the altar as a living sacrifice, that's vulnerable, man. That's like uh you're just letting it all go. Yeah, you're so, holding nothing back. Right. That's when that that has to happen psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, physically, in order for the Holy Spirit to it's 
But if you're all tangled up and twisted and uh, and, and and second guessing yourself, if if all this hum- if there's this if your layer of humanity is this thick, it's going to be a little difficult. It's going to be there's going to be some difficulty. So you that's right. That's what Christianity is about. That's what um, discipleship is about. That's why fasting, prayer, reading, right, all that stuff is is throwing yourself in the altar, becoming a living. All that stuff is designed to make that human piece thinner and thinner and thinner so that it's easier for you to freely flow in communication and in power with the Holy Spirit. Uh, A prayer I talk about with people and one that I pray when I'm feeling stuck, you know, we all go through ups and downs. Um, God, show me where I'm too comfortable. And if I'm talking about heart issues, show me what I've settled for. Show me where I'm too comfortable, whether that's with a sin. God, reveal a comfort in my life that I shouldn't be comfortable with. And take me into the uncomfortable, Lord. Lord, show me what is it every day. God, what, what is it today that you want to give me that I'm trying to maintain in my comfort zone? And that's where growth and reliance on the Holy Spirit happens when we're if, with if, if we're supposed to go out of our comfort zone how are we supposed to survive yeah well you can't if you're trying to survive in your own spirit but if you are like okay I give it to you help me grow in this help me speak kindly to my spouse help me lead my kids in a new way that I have no resource other than laying it down at the feet of your at, at your feet yeah the daily bread. It's give us, give us this, Lord. Our, give me, Lord, our day, my daily bread. It doesn't say give me my annual bread. It doesn't say give me the bread I need this month. It says give my my bread right now. And I think that is physical. Give me my sustenance. Sustenance provide, Lord. I think it's also spiritual. God, give me mm-hmm. give me the bread, the spiritual bread I need today to make it through to do to walk in what you've designed for me today. Show us. Show us our comfort zone, Lord. Show us what I'm too comfortable with. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Any more testimonies? Surely we should have more testimonies, right? <laughs> we had more people saying, yeah. Don't be shy, Father. Release those testimonies. And see, the testimonies aren't for our benefit. They're for your benefit and the benefit of those watching and reading. What else? Yeah, this is, um, you know, I was, I had a thought I should probably do this. I, I should probably do a teaching series maybe once a week. I don't know where I'm going to find the time to do that, but I should probably do a series uh, interactive, like on Zoom, on this book, This Thing is Spiritual, um, chapter, The Power of Discernment chapter. We would do uh, three chapters in a row. The Power of Discernment, Bezalel, Son of Light, and the Prophetic Nature of. I felt that last night. Somebody mentioned something last night that they were uh, pages some, something through something. Uh, they were talking about page 95 or something, 94 through 110 uh, last night from this book. But I should, and, I, and so I took a look at what they were talking about. I just took a glance. I should probably do that. The power of discernment, Bezalel, son of light, the prophetic nature of, and break it down. I got to figure out when I can do that. Thank you. Um, I know because I'm still supposed to be doing a a Parsha, weekly Parsha portion for the Patreon group. I'm just... Who wants to volunteer to help us do this stuff? What have you been doing, Alan? I mean, I mean, been catching up on your television. Yeah. Bonbons and Oprah. <clears throat> we need we need some we need actual other people to do stuff. Graphic design, video and audio editing. But I've already mentioned that. Anyway, um, uh, I know, right, Alyssa? With all that spare time I have, but I think it would be important because it would be good to learn. Anyway. 
this kind of stuff that we're talking about, Holy Spirit, healing, uh, alignment, <sighs> putting yourself in position, all that stuff. That's what this conference is going to be all about. It's a Holy Spirit conference. There's there's a question for you, Alan. Here we go. This is a good one. How do you guard yourself from demonic spirits, but open yourself up to the act of Holy Spirit? Oh man. It's not stupid, Laura. It's a it's a great question. It's a legitimate question. Um all right, let's take it piece by piece. Let's start with opening yourself up to the whole active Holy Spirit. Open yourself up to the active Holy Spirit. Well, opening yourself up to the active Holy Spirit is going to require, like every, like we've talked about, um, it's it. The best way to do this is to actually be involved with a group of believers that are actually already doing this, so that you can be, so it can be modeled to you. That's the New Testament. That's the biblical model. That's what the prophets did with their prophets. That's what the Jesus did with his disciples, and that's what the disciples did with their disciples. Okay, and and let's leave that question up there so that people can know what we're talking about. I don't know, my ears all weird. So you have that. That's the the that's going to be the easiest way to do that. Put yourself, get involved with a church body of believers that are already functioning, so that you can be modeled and discipled in this. Okay, if that's not possible, then you need to ask the, the Holy Spirit to open up your the eyes of your understanding when it comes to reading about this stuff in the word prayer and fasting lots of prayer and fasting you're gonna have to do lots of whether or not you're in fellowship you're gonna have to do a lot of prayer and fasting regardless regarding this stuff this is to open yourself up to the uh, the holy spirit and then you have to read my no i'm just just kidding um i discussed discernment in this because discernment is everything because you have because that's the key here how do you know it's the holy spirit versus a demonic spirit. How do you know it's stick or snake, right? Discernment is everything. And they, and Paul freely admits that discernment is a difficult thing. It's, it's touchy. It's, it's hard, you know, you know, because it takes, it requires maturity on the, on the student, on the disciple, on the, on the disciple, because you have to, right. Um, I've shared uh, taking my daughter to uh, places where it was highly demonic and would, you know, but it was like subtle, like uh, let's say a, a, a shop where they sold um, pagan stuff or tarot cards. You know, it was a spiritual shop, a spiritualist shop, but it, it, but it would look like just a normal boutique anywhere. And taking, you know, my daughter into that store and keeping an eye on her as we looked at stuff and waited for her to go, Oh, wait a second. That's not right. Or, you know, or she would sense or discern, right? That's raising them up. But so we did fellowship, prayer and fasting, asking the Lord, the, the Father, to open up your eyes of your understanding, to understand these pieces of the, of the, of the Bible and the Scripture regarding these things. And then uh, discernment. you got to have discernment because you need to know what's what. You need to know it's the Holy Spirit versus a demonic spirit. Uh, a lot of times the demonic will come at us through a demonic agent, a human being. Got to, you got to know that quickly to be able to co cover yourself, protect yourself. Um, <laughs> practice. Uh, I don't suggest people get involved with um, deliverance ministry unless you know you're supposed to. And then only after being trained on how to do it by people that actually know how to do it, because it'll, it'll, it'll back, it can backfire on you and it can hurt you. I know, I know too. So we lived in Dallas for a while and we lived, um, so the mission, the Wycliffe missionary base was near us. And so we knew a lot of Wycliffe missionaries that came to the church that we were going to, and they had horror stories. A lot of these missionaries, none of their children were serving the Lord. And they would tell us about how the time where they were in, I don't know, Papua New Guinea or whatever, and they were cursed and their children were cursed by like a, a, a local tribal uh, uh, shaman or something, you know, uh, uh, voodoo and stuff. And then their kids were decimated and they, and they put themselves out and didn't have the, uh, the authority or the experience on how to, and they got, they got their butts kicked. I, I can't, I, I've seen that more than because for some reason, Christians, Christians aren't very smart and they're not very uh, intelligent. 
and they're not very wise when it comes to this stuff, and they just think, oh, the Bible says this. <laughs> they go out there and they, they drown. It's really weird. But anyway, so you if you can so do that first, do the Holy Spirit first, right? Fellowship, prayer, fasting, reading, Holy Spirit teaching you through the word about these things. And then you can exercise these things in a non-dangerous way, right? You can practice in a wading pool instead of just jumping into the ocean, right? As an analogy. Um, if you're married or you have kids, you start praying for them for things, uh, for their understanding to open up, for he their healing, right? And then develop this relationship with the Holy Spirit where it becomes, you know, it has to be like breathing. It has to be natural. And while you're doing that, you're also praying for your discernment to be quickened so that you can guard yourself from the demonic. Is anything else, Chris, or do you think that's good or what? Oh, no, I got lots of comments. I mean, it's being in the Word. I'm seeing comments in here, but like you got to know the Word of God for what Alan's talking about for discernment. And you don't, you don't get, you don't get, you don't get the discernment by like, engaging demonic activity you get discernment by reading the word and then the other thing i would say is applying it apply or praying the word uh i was thinking of uh, psalm 51 uh what verse is this i think it's 11 51 11 cast me not away from your presence take not your holy spirit from me this is david after the prophet nathan came and convicted him of sin it's uh, like a repentance. He, he stepped out of alignment with the Spirit. A prophet came and spoke to him, and now he's saying, don't cast your Holy Spirit from me. For the Holy Spirit to leave him, he would have been aware that it's with him. And so I would say pray pray the Word. One of the ways you engage the Spirit is praying, praying the words of the Lord back to him. You could start with Psalms, but it's just saying, for instance, this verse, God, you say, I, I agree with David, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, show me where the Holy Spirit is in my life. Show me what you're doing. I, I want to live like David lived. I don't want to live apart from your presence and your Holy Spirit. I rest in your spirit today. Mm -hmm. God, I pray, I'm going to connect it to what I was saying earlier. Show me my comfort zones that allow me to have the sin of David and Bathsheba. I don't want that. I reject that. God, show me what's in my comfort right now that the Holy Spirit, by your spirit, show me the things in my heart that you want me to give to you. And, and it's, it's a daily putting the word in your heart. David, Psalm 119, he talks about the word, the testimony, your, your, um, your commandments I delight in. That means he was aware of Torah. That, that means there were, he was aware of something that he was putting time into. Mm -hmm. And so I would just, you know, soak in the word, word, prayer, pray in the spirit, ask the Lord to, uh, uh, you know, pray back the words of the Lord that are in scripture to him. And he will, he will guide you by his spirit and take you where you, where he wants you to go. And then your discernment will increase so that, um, as you see something that sounds right or almost right, but that the world is twisted, you know, Unitarianism, you know, uh, political correctness stuff, stuff yeah. that's like, that sounds right, but that's God reveal, reveal your heart and your spirit yeah. for this, but focus on the spirit. Don't focus on the looking for bad things in the world to counter focus on the Holy spirit. And that's usually first and foremost through the word of God. Yeah. Um, I mentioned three chapters in this. The following chapter that I didn't mention is called David, the prophet king, because you can't talk about spiritual gifts and the prophetic and this being spiritual without mentioning David, the prophet king. Uh, and then Jesus is son of David. It's just amazing. The, it all ties in. It all makes sense. Imagine that when you do, when you understand how this works. <laughs> cool. Great question. All right. What else? Yeah, good stuff, Chris. Good job. Good job, Chris.
Laura, I might soak in those words. Um, Timmer, let me post Timmer's comment for a minute. This part, claim the promise of John 16. Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. Jesus promises that the 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 Holy Spirit will teach us all thing. I mean, all things. If you haven't ever done a deep dive in John, I would read read John 14, 15, and 16 every day for a week. I mean, there, he's talking about the counselor, the Holy Spirit abiding with the Father. Just get that the language of Jesus in the in those you know those are there's a lot of red letters 14 mm-hmm. 15 16 just the, how jesus is talking about the father he's talking about yeah, the trinity alan he's talking about the his relationship with the father and his relationship with the holy spirit and and jesus uh, um jesus said he's talking about i don't do anything without the father and how he's engaging yeah. the holy spirit and that there's so much good stuff in that 14 15 16 yeah. Soak in that for a week and just see what God does in your heart. And I know Christianity doesn't teach us this. They actually say it doesn't matter. But understanding the dy- understanding the playing field and where the pieces are is so important. You know, the Christianity really does emphasize and promote that you can just it's all nilly willy. You can do it, whatever. You know, uh, it's you know, it's no. There's like, and I say that to say one of the things that fall into this, that fall through the cracks like this is the fact that Jesus isn't here. He's just not. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, and in his stead, he said, I'm going to pray to the Father since I'm leaving, and I just and I just messed up your whole deal <laughs> and brought this whole new perspective on things, and not just that, but, you know, I showed you how to heal the sick, cast out demons, and raise the dead. Um, Pre-Pentecost, very important. I'm going to pray that since I'm since I'm leaving, I'm going to pray that the Father would allow you to have the Holy Spirit, because that's what's going to lead you to all truth. That's going to convict you of sin. It's going to remind you of everything I taught you, and it's going to empower you, power from on high. Right? So he leaves. He's ascended to the right hand of the Father. He's not here. Elvis has left the building. That's not something they, they, they tell you all the time. They don't they they talk they talk about how he's like right here. He's not, but the Holy Spirit is. And that's important because again, if all you have to do is not understand what it is that we're talking about, and you won't get the same results. And then he tells them, right? Then he then he he comes down. After he rises, uh, he spends 40 days on the, uh, well, he doesn't spend 40 days. He spends, yeah, he spends 40 days walking around with the, uh, with the disciples in his new body, eating fish, walking through walls, tells them to wait in Jerusalem because he knew that in 10 days, because he ascended on the 40th day, he knew that in 10 days, the Holy Spirit would come and that it would literally come on Shavuot. That's why there's all these people in Jerusalem because it's a pilgrimage feast. So, and if you look up Pentecost in the Greek Strong's, it talks about Shavuot, it talks about the feast. So, yeah, even the Greeks know this to be true, but for some reason they've taught you otherwise. So, and then he leaves, and the Holy Spirit comes down, and this is what we, this is what the church has been working with, or supposed to be working with, in order to make that transition from church to bride, from servant to friend, from friend to co-heir see that's so amazing isn't it <laughs> <laughs> it's especially when you think of a, you think of like old testament battle you like where he where he's going into the, the 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 lord is going into the enemy camp and disturbing communication they're killing each other slaying yeah and if it, he's if, making them it, hear things and, and the way I, I connect with this is like in a movie, like visually, and 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 they're showing that that Lord in the king's chambers or in the battleground, and they're yeah. like, "Yeah, we got them." And then he and then he looks over at you and he's like, "Oh, you want to come in here? You want to hear what we're talking about?" That's the guy. Like he's not he's not you're not cast out of the castle. You're the servant. You're the minion. He's like, "You're my friend." Mm-hmm. Like, hey, come here. Look what we're gonna do to the enemy. <laughs> 
it's just it's mind blowing. You know, oh, my I, goodness. And I bring up I bring up the examples of was Jehoshaphat, prayer and fasting, and as they prayed and fast, God was like knocking down the enemy in front of them. You know, it's yeah. But yeah, I love that he he would make him hear things, right? <laughs> what was that? It's amazing stuff. It's crazy. Um I read something here. Huh, I thought I read something in here. I did read something. Where is it? Give me a Yes, and, and right, and like Michael Burke is saying, yes, and he's your mediator. He's mediating up there on our behalf, which is cool. So it's not like he's not involved. He is, but it's important to understand he's not here. The Holy Spirit is. He's up there, and he's in, right, mediating. So it's, there's an order to, there's a reason why it's set up the way it's set up. And for some reason, Christianity says it does, it doesn't matter what day you keep as the Sabbath. That they'll actually, they actually tell you that. That's, have you ever heard that, Chris? I have. Yeah. yeah. That's actual Christian theology. It doesn't matter what day you keep the Sabbath because Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. And I talked about that yesterday in a two minute warning. That's like, it, <clears throat> For some reason, it's really important for them for you to leave your brain at the door. It's just bizarre. You know, just because he said that doesn't mean that. You don't dismiss this because of that. Yeah. It's totally out of context. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. That's not what he meant. And uh, yeah, no, you cannot keep whatever day you want as the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. That means you're supposed to remember about something. See? You can't... This is me being triggered inside. Mm -hmm. I see that. <laughs> uh, I'm, well, I'm just, let's uh, pray for some people. Let's do it. I don't even know I what time feel, it is. I feel like, I'm not saying we're done. I'm just I saying. Know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what time it is. Um, Nath, Nathalie, it's 8.08. Oh, or we're, 9 we're, your time. That went by fast. Um, I don't wow. know if you say Natalie or Nathalie, but you said your husband, you're still claiming um, for breathing. So, God, we just want to declare healing over the lungs of Nathalie's husband. We ask you to, let me uh, look at the comments, see what she actually said. Um, well, we should probably do this first. Husband's lungs, husband lungs. Right, but she's also saying, but doesn't it, uh, he also say, I will never leave you? I'm getting I'll to be that, with bro. you always, I'm but you say he's not here? This yeah, is I'm... new and a bit, can you, you want to tackle that? Yes, yeah, yes, I, I was going to get it. Um, God, we just declare healing for husband's lungs and I ask you to show Nathalie and her husband. She's, she's saying it right here. She doesn't feel like they're doing church. I don't know what that means, but it's clear. You're prompting her to take, to take her out of her comfort zone and the independent life. And I ask you just to give her the courage and the faith and the wisdom to know what that is. And we just pray that that would unlock healing. Mm -hmm. We don't get healing by being perfect. We don't get healing by checking off all the boxes, but you do give scriptural principles of how we can walk in alignment with you. So I just pray that you would give that to Natalie. Forgive me if I'm saying it right. If it's Natalie, I don't know. You know this person, Lord. You know her husband. I ask you just to provide and lead her. And I just declare favor and peace over her life as she comes into alignment with you, Lord. Absolutely. And I, uh, maybe, Alan, you can follow this up, but I, I'm just feeling a sense of like, Lord, for anyone that you are calling, I'm thinking of Laura, um, that, are, that is sensing a call into new things of the spirit or like Timur, Timur uh, realized um, the gift of tongues and a new, a, a new freedom in tongues last week. I just pray that you would take people into new steps out of their comfort zone into the arms of your of their father and as a friend uh, um, take people from a slave and a servant mentality into a friend mentality by your spirit into new things in your spirit lord i just pray that release in your name 
Amen. All right, let's tackle this last question. Okay. And then we'll uh, we'll call it a day. Go ahead. Uh, he says, I'll never leave you. I'll be with you always, but you say he's not here. This is new and a bit confusing right now. I just pray, uh, bind the spirit of confusion by your name, Lord. Uh, confusion is, is from the enemy. Um, and I just I just ask you to bring Nathalie peace. Yes, Father. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. Um, Nathalie, I'm just hearing, come to him like a child. Let the little children come to me. And so what other ounce of faith, whatever nearness you fear, just engage him. And he promises, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. It's not about doing. It's not about trying. It's about obeying and obeying quickly. Mm-hmm. So whatever whatever nudge you're feeling in your heart from the Lord, just make a step towards him. Don't resist. Don't make it complicated. Children don't make things complicated. It's very simple for children. They walk to someone they trust. They walk towards the smile. He's smiling at you. We we'll just walk towards his smile and see what he has for you. Did you want to tackle that question? I'm sorry. I thought I did. I think she's like literally asking for clarification. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was giving it to you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm praying for the spirit to reveal the answer. All right. Jesus, Jesus was ascended to the right hand of the Father. So I, I don't know how much lag time there is, but you, you know that, right? You, you've, you've read that and you believe that, correct? Which means he's not here in the physical realm. He's not even here. He's not here in the physical realm on earth. He's at the right hand of the Father because he ascended into heaven. So first we have to agree that you agree with that. That means he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he said, I'm going to leave and I'm going to give you, and I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit would come to you know, be give, given to you. And it is. So when I say that Jesus is not here, it's because he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Right? But Elohim, God's plural, means because the Holy Spirit is here, he hasn't left us. Now, we're not Trinitarians. I mean, because if, if we're going to count three, we might as well, we have to count ten because there's also seven spirits of God. And remember, the seven spirits are the seven eyes on the Lamb in the, in the throne room in Revelation 5. See, it's so it's all, it's like a, I'll use the word, a, a collective. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it, it's, it's Elohim, it's God's. There's more than one, right? There's a, there's a whole thing going on. So, even though the, the, the person of Jesus isn't here because he ascended unto the Father and he's sitting at his right hand, the fact that the Holy Spirit is here means he's still here with us, but it's in the form, the, the essence of God that's here isn't in the form of the Son because the Son's sitting at his right hand in the throne room, but the essence of Father God is here in his Spirit. Could you please let me know that you heard that? And let, and do you agree or not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. Thank you for such great questions. Thank you again. You guys are untwisting some tightly wound threads I didn't even know. Oh, nice. Well, that's part of the uh, process. Awesome. So hopefully you understand. and gracious. Yeah, hopefully you understand what I said and it made sense. And you're able to see how it all works together. For example... We know, even though I'm, we, even though we're not Trinitarians, we know that Father God is revealed in the Old Testament in the Scriptures. We also know that Jesus is revealed in the Old Testament, and we also know that the Holy Spirit is revealed in the Old Testament. But it still says, "Echad." It still says, "God is one." 
Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear Israel, Adonai, Elo, your Elohim is one. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Right? God is one. Even though he had manifested already, right, in those three various characteristics, but we also know that the seven spirits of God are also roaming the earth at all times. See, there's so there's ten components at work on the daily, on the earth, in the earth, above the earth, under the earth, spirit realm, physical realm. Right? There's all this activity going on. But he's still he's still Adonai Echad. Adonai God is one. The best example is Abram. Abraham. Abraham knew what was going on, man. This guy was with the quickness. He's hanging out underneath the sh- in the shade of a tree in front of his tent, and he sees three guys walking down the road towards him, and he knew. Oh, my God. Which means seeing spiritual entities manifested in the physical realm was normal for this guy. He did live in the land of Canaan with Nephilim. Oh, let's not forget what's going on. But he sees these three guys walking up towards him, and he knows. He knows it's, 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 it's Elohim being manifested as three men. And he offered them food and drink, and they said, okay. And then they told Sarah that she was going to be pregnant. Sarah, Sarah, that she was going to be pregnant, and she laughed, and, and they went, why did you do that? She goes, I didn't do that. And he goes, yeah, you did. Don't lie. We've, we talked about, we talk, we will be talking about, that's coming up in the field manual. We bring it up in that. Um, did, then, did I just make it worse or did, is this, are you understanding? Let's see Being omnipresent? Well, God's God's God. Right? I mean, this whole thing is still functioning. We were we woke up to a sun rising uh, in the east because he's omnipresent, because he's in control, because he's he's behind all that. Enoch tells us how all that works, but he's in control. None of this functions. Even the 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 natural laws of cause and effect don't work. Right? Unless he, because he's, I'm thinking of lyrics from Job, treader of the waves of the sea, your mountain shaker and heaven shake, you know, mountain maker and heaven shaker. I mean, he's like, he's like the globe of our snow globe. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's like he's in control. He's got it all going on. His, he keeps, he makes it all happen. That's how he's omnipresent. Well, so here's the thing. The, the Trinity, she's asking about the, the Trinity is a Catholic doctrine that came out like a hundred years after Jesus. There's only one verse that even suggests the Trinity, and that's like only in the King James Version. Uh, for example, there's uh, in the King James Version, it actually repa- replaces Passover with Easter in the New Testament on one account. See what I'm saying? So, um, yes, it does say Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but right, which is why I explained the three guys in the Old Testament, but I also explained how all three show up in the Old Testament. But hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Now, if we're going to go with the Trinity concept, then we have to go with the Ten, because there's seven spirits of God. See what I'm saying? So, She asks about mono. No, we are saying he's monotheistic. There is one God. The right, Lord your God his, is one God. But, he's, but, it, but, here, but here's the problem. Because that's, yes, <clears throat> but based on Scripture, he's plural. God's. Yeah. Elohim. Elohim is, is his name, and that means gods with an S, which is how, which is why you can come up with, right, let us make man in our image. He's not talking to angels. He's talking to himself, which is why you can say 
Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the seven spirits of God, right? So if there's ten of him, or ten expressions of him in our reality, that would make him plural. Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry, but this is stuff your pastor... I did a series on things your pastor didn't tell you on a two-minute warning. This is probably one of them. They don't want... See, if they don't know about this stuff, they can't teach it to you, see? And they'd rather not throw curveballs your way. They'd rather just roll the ball to you. Keep you keep it simple. But not just that, but it, it also stunts your ability to understand the things that you're going to have to understand in order to do warfare and expand territory, which they also don't teach. Okay, wow, we're way over now. Yeah, how much oh, time you got, Alan? That went by fast. Well, I've got all day. I mean, this is what I do. This is what he's told me to do, so I'm doing it. But I, I have to go with two-minute warning in 40 minutes, and I should probably... Anything else? How else can we serve you this morning? God, I ask you to bless Lenny today. Yes. Heal his body. We just declare healing by the name of Jesus in his Amen. body. Strengthen Amen. his muscles. Strengthen his heart. We don't don't know. Actually, I don't know what's going on, but I just uh, ask yeah, you he's, to encourage yeah. his heart. Bless him. Yeah, it's not his heart, but it's he didn't say I could share. I didn't ask if I could share, but he's not feeling good. He's not in the hospital or anything like that. I want to get a confirmation from Nathalie that you're okay and that we haven't freaked you out too much <laughs> before we go. She already jumped off. Are you serious? <laughs> I don't know. She oh. She's like, screw these guys. These guys are crazy. She tapped out. Hey, don't forget to like, share, leave a comment, YouTube, Facebook, whatever, wherever you're at. Do the social media stuff. Share this. Let's grow our audience. Let your. Do you have a friend or family that could benefit from something like this? Let us know. Let them know by sharing. Yeah. All right, Nathalie, come on. Nathalie, let us know that you're okay before we go. That's. Oh, there she is. I get the plural Elohim and his counsel. Me too. Learn some. That's fine. See, as long as you're not freaked out and you're well, you're you're willing to come back, and we will help walk you through this. All right. You can always leave us an email, info at chameleonchurch.com. Alyssa would be happy to help you. I'm just throwing her under the bus. Um, the seven spirit, yeah, it shows up in Revelation chapter five. Seven spirits of God are the seven eyes of the Lamb uh, that go throughout the earth looking for whom. Right. So, yeah, check it out. Well, if you want to, uh, you don't have to. Um, it's more important to build relationship with the Holy Spirit because I think she was also asking about that right earlier. Was that you? Was that her? I think it was. Yeah. Relationship with the Holy Spirit, prayer, fasting, in the Word, and, and, and like consciously asking the Father, not just in your mind, but like audibly. I mean, you don't have to be yelling, but consciously asking the Father to guide you in this walk in His Holy Spirit. So, yes, Alyssa, he's okay. He's just not feeling good. All right. Hey. It's been real. Man, thank you so much. Father, seal these testimonies. Seal your word and their hearts in your children's hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next week.
You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. The views and opinions expressed during our broadcasts are solely those of the broadcast producers, hosts, and or guests, etc., and are not necessarily the views or opinions of the Travelog Network, its sponsors, or affiliates.